What's going on everybody? Um, today's gonna be a little bit different. Um, we're gonna talk advent of code. This is literally something that I did not know anything about until this morning. Um, Theo put up a video about it, one of my favorite web development channels, um, talking about how great it is for your career and how awesome it is. And like, it's like a good lead code challenge, which is very rare. So um, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, like I wasn't until like several hours ago, let's talk about what code is. So if you're not familiar with what leak code is, leak code is basically, um, it's like a type of coding challenge, basically that, um, you know, gives you like a certain, usually algorithmically based challenge to write code to solve. Um, so there are varying different places where you can do leak code challenges. There are competitions, tournaments, even places where you can win money. Um, but it has been criticized fairly frequently for being very unrealistic and not actually helping you learn how to be a good developer. Um, I've only done one day of this challenge. You can also get to the other years. So this is 2022. You can, I think Theo did one from like 2015. Um, but these are cool in that A, they're fun. Um, they're all like Christmas themed and like they kind of have like weird quirky backstories behind them. B, they're competitive. So you can go over here to the leaderboard and I'll explain like the score breakdown and stuff like that um, here in a second. Um, but they're also kind of like cool challenges. So I've done one, I watched Theo do another and I've watched a couple of other people do ones from like pra past years and they're like fairly neat. Um, so there are two challenges per day over 25 days. So the Christmas advent from December 1st all the way to the 25th. You are scored based off of how quickly you finish the challenge. And here's one issue that I have with the competition just right off the bat. So the challenges get released at 12 o'clock Eastern, which is 11 o'clock my time. Um, I'm probably going to be up at 11 o'clock anyways, but I'm not going to be up like at 11 just to do a leak code challenge. So I feel like making the score system based on how quickly you compete the complete the challenge, knowing that that's not like really doable for everybody. Eh. If I were more competitive about this kind of stuff, that would irritate me. Um, but I don't really care. I'm just kind of doing it for fun and doing it to learn some because I'm doing it in Rust, which if you've been following my channel at all, you know that I'm fairly new to. I've been writing malware in Rust for a couple of weeks. Um, it's fun, but I don't know much about the language. I'm still learning it, and I figured this is a fairly good way to do that. And I did learn a lot from the first one. So let's go into day one. Um, so here it sets up the story, basically... You're collecting stars in order to feed Santa's reindeer. Not super interested in that, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's see. So here's where, yeah, here's where the first day's challenge actually starts. You are given a list of basically food that the elves are carrying in the form of caloric counts. Um, so we'll go to my input here in a second. Um, but basically you're given this big long list of um, numbers that represent calories that each individual elf is carrying and the elves are separated by blank lines. Um, so the goal for the first part of today's challenge was to figure out which elf is carrying the most calories. Now, let's go over to the code. If we go over here to the code, um, I'm going to be completely straight up with you. This is not the way that I did it the first time around. Um, I did not even think to sort all of the inputs um, and just take the top one. I should have. That's like the easiest way to do it. But the cool thing about these challenges is you have a part one, which is easy, and a part two, which kind of pushes you in the right direction, and it's a little bit more difficult. Um, so let's pretend like I did it the right way in part one and go over the code here. So we feed in our input um, file, which is right here. Um, so here's our input. Basically, you can look at these individual groups as individual elves, and you can view these caloric counts as like individual pieces of food that that elf is carrying. Um, so here's elf one. It's carrying a piece of food with 8,400 calories, 8,500, and so on. Here's elf two, blah, blah, blah. The goal of this is to find which elf is carrying the most total calories and print that out. So the best thing that you could probably do is just go ahead and sum them all up. So if you look here, I'm going, I'm iterating over each individual line um, and I'm testing for the line length. So if the line length is less than one, or I could have just pressed like equal to zero, um, then it's a blank line and we can go ahead and say, okay, we are now moving on to another elf, which means we need to sum up the last one. So here I've got basically a moving frame um, named current elf. 
and current elf is going to hold all of the caloric values of that current elf. So basically, if we get to this point right here on line nine, then current elf is holding all of these values. Once we get to the blank line, that means we're going to move on to another elf so that we can go ahead and like sum that up. So this right here takes the vector, turns it into an iterator, and then sums everything up. Then we're going to push that sum to the totals. So the totals is going to hold just a list of sums. And then we're going to blank out the current elf. If it is a line that contains numbers, or if it contains basically anything else, then it's going to go ahead and push that value onto that vector, which is basically just rest arrays. So at the very end, we're going to sort all of this, which is what I should have done. You know, it's what I ended up doing in part two, um, but we're going to sort the list of totals and then we're just going to print the last one um, since it um, by default rest will sort everything in ascending order. Um, there's probably a way to switch that, but I just didn't even bother. So let's look at part two. Um, if we run part one, let's switch these two. So that is main underscore two. Uh, let's call it three. And this is main underscore. This will just be main. Crap. Fat fingering everything. This will just be main. So let's do cargo run on that. Oh, that is not a terminal. It may not allow me to do that. It's got some warnings. Lines and input file. Invalid digit. That's interesting. Huh. Okay, we're not going to worry about that. I'm just going to explain the um, basically the way that I did all this, and I'll debug everything later. Um, it may have to do with there being two mains in here. Let's try that. File name's right. If this doesn't work, I just won't worry about it. And I'll just explain all of my answers. Yeah, that didn't work. Doesn't matter. All right, let's move on to part two. So, I'm going to rename this to main underscore three score two and rename this one to main. All right, so part two was slightly more interesting, especially if you weren't smart and did it like, um, how do I get to part two? Yeah, there's part two. So um, basically, if you didn't sort the list, then this one's going to be a little bit more difficult. If you did sort the list, this one's very, very easy. Basically, now instead of just taking the caloric input from the top elf, you take the caloric input from the top three. So if we go over here, it is literally just a matter of instead of summing up just the top elf like we did there, you sum up the top three. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and take a slice basically of the totals, and then I'm going to make it an iterator, and then I'm going to sum up that slice and print it out. So, Let's see actually if I can run this or if there's just altogether a bug somewhere. Yeah, that one didn't do it either. All right, there's some weird syntax bug that I'm just not going to deal with right now. Um, so that is the solution to um, the first day of the advent of code. Um, if y'all enjoyed this, I'm going to do one of these, you know, very off the cuff, obviously, um, videos pretty much every day now because um, I think they're interesting and they're going to help me learn Rust. Um, so if y'all enjoyed this, stick around, watch the next one tomorrow, um, probably post it around the same time. Take it easy. Peace.